in Boaz, but I changed it while I was playing the drums. So uh, thank God he did. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about reading the Bible. How many read the Bible every day? Every day. We're talking about reading the Bible this morning. The basics. I love the basics, right? Because, listen, we can't ever achieve what God has for us if we don't know what his word says. You know what I mean? It really comes down to that. And yet, there's so many things in God's word that's available to us that we don't partake of because of our lack of knowledge about it. You know, and God... uh, God has a specific purpose, and he has a plan for each and every one of our lives, Amen. and uh, great things for us to do, great things, you know, and, and, uh, but we won't know what they are if we don't spend time with him, yeah. so we can never get too busy where we don't uh, spend time with God in his word, you know, and, and real, and not, and I was talking with my mom, because it's kind of funny, um, not just reading because you feel like this is something I have to do, and, no. and you feel better if you know I skim through the proverb for today. But did you really read it? You know what I mean? You got to meditate on the word. So, so we got to make time for that. So four things that God does through scripture for us. Number one, uh, if we get, uh, you can open your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I want to uh, go through these today. And while you're doing that, we'll pray. Father, thank you for an opportunity to share your word this morning. Thank you that your word is truth. Your word is life. It's powerful, Father. It's living. And as we embrace it, Lord, it changes who we are. It refocuses our mind and our, and our thoughts, and it causes us to walk in what you have for us, Lord. And we know that you have specific plans and purposes for each and every one of us, uh, plans to prosper us and to bless us so that we can carry out your covenant here on the earth. And Father, I yield myself to the Holy Spirit. Speak through me today. Uh, I'll be sensitive to your voice. May the words that are spoken, not just mere words, Father, may people hear you and see you through me today. And all that's said and done with point people to a relationship with you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the importance of uh, of reading God's word. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and uh, I'm at chapter 3, and we're going to start in uh, verse 16. Second Timothy 3, 16. Well, I'll I'll start in verse 14. It says, But you must remain faithful to the thing you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to, one, teach us what is true, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and teaches us to do what is right. It is God's way of preparing us in every way, fully equipped for every good thing God wants us to do. That's the New Living Translation. The King James, all scriptures God breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So this morning, the purpose of the Bible is to help us. To live out the purpose God has for our lives. Amen. And, and um, you know, we wouldn't try building something unless we had a plan or we had some instructions to look at. But yet we want to live our Christian life without ever looking at the manual and how to live this God-filled and inspiring life that God has promised to us. So it's very important, number one, to understand that if we're going to, if we're going to succeed in our, in our faith and in our Christian walk, with God, we're going to have to spend time in His Word every day. Amen. Every day. And, and um, you know, quality time. Not just skimming through it or doing it because Amen. it's something that we have to do. And our conscience gets the best of us if we don't skim through it real fast. But really spending time in His Word. Amen. And I have found that when I spend time in God's Word and I make the time to do it, and I, and I really ask the Holy Spirit to teach me as I'm reading... God speaks to us. You know, God speaks to us. How many feel like you may be in a dry spot? Like you feel like, I haven't heard God speak to me in forever. You know, like like you were saying, even this morning, sometimes life gets crazy at times. You know, and, 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 you know, we, 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 we teach faith, we teach the scriptures, we teach all those kind of things, but yet it seems as though God is, like, far away from us. 
I'm in the middle of this and I feel like I'm all alone. Those are the times that we need to open up his, his word. And those are the times you're not going to feel like doing that. But those are the times that you need to do that, Amen. that we need to do it, that I do it. And as I begin to uh, speak to God, and he sees what's going on in our hearts anyway, and he knows what's going on in our lives, as we begin to open his word and begin to look at it, God talks to us. Yeah, hallelujah. He does. Has God ever spoken to you as you were reading the Bible? Yeah, hallelujah. It, may, it may be not like in some audible voice. Some of you may think it sounded like, did other people he just hear that? But... He speaks to us in our heart. Yes, hallelujah. And it, you could have read the same thing 20 different times. But every time you open it and you, you, you invite the Holy Spirit to teach you, God talks to us. Amen. And when God talks to us, he gives us divine direction. When God gives directions, they, you don't get lost. You know what I mean? It's not like using Google Maps or, or, or MapQuest or something like that when you kind of know where you're going and then the map, Google says, oh, turn here. And you're like, no, that's not the right way to go. You know, because they, they, they don't know all the shortcuts that you do. God, he gives us direction when we, when we speak, when, he, when we read his word. He speaks to us. You know, and that's so important in our life because, you know, we, we embark with good intentions, in this journey of life, and, and we, we think we know what we need to be doing, but sometimes our plans are not what God's plans are. Amen. And, the old, and, and that's the times where we start going down a different path, thinking that it seems good. Proverbs 16, 9 talks about that. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is end, ends up in death. Um, and we, we go down this journey and we find ourselves in the wrong spot of town, wrong part of town, you know, because that's not God's plan. So I'm just trying to establish the fact that if we want to be successful and we want the blessings of God and we want peace in our life and we want peace in our marriage and we want our kids serving God and we want, uh, you know, the things that God desires yeah. for us to have, we need to follow his plan, yeah, not our plan. Because our plan is going to take us on a detour. And, and I'm going to tell you this right now, that his plan is not going to seem right to your natural mind. So let, be forewarned. Okay? But how many know that God could see 20 years from now? He has a bird's eye view of your life. You know? We could see next week, if that, we can make a plan for next week. But see, God sees 20 years from now. He knows where we're going to be five years from now. He knows where we're going to be ten years from now. And he, if we follow his plan, he's going to bring us to a place of blessing in our life. Yes. You understand that? But, but we, it's so important that we surrender Amen. our life to his will. And not, and not be so concerned with our agenda Amen. and what we want to do. So... There's four points that I want to talk about this morning, and, and through reading God's Word and through studying His Word, the first thing that Timothy said, that His, His, His Word teaches us. God's Word teaches us. Yeah. Amen? How many believe that? Amen. That, that this is the, the, the ultimate book. If you want to learn things, you're going to find it in here. Yes. The way of life is found right in here. So God teaches us. God shows us the path on which we should walk. Yes. Proverbs chapter 3. Okay? I'm gonna, I, I have a bunch of scriptures. I love reading the Bible. So um, these are good for us. We all know Proverbs chapter 3. Um, I don't even have to read it. I could. It's uh, trust in the Lord, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will direct your path. So God's word teaches us. It shows us which path we should take. Amen. Okay? Proverbs 4, 26 and 27 says this. And I, and, and I love starting in verse 25. I love the end of this chapter. It says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Then stick to the path and stay safe. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. So, so God's word 
When we spend time in it and, and read his scriptures on a daily basis, he teaches us. He talks to us. He shows us which path we should be on. That's important. That's important because there are so many paths in life. Amen. You know, and, and the, the, the truth of the matter is that, that the enemy wants us to take the wrong path. Because if he can get us sidetracked, he can get us going in the wrong direction. And if we get going in the wrong direction, we're no good. We're no good to ourselves. We're not a help to other people. We're not a help to our families. It's, it just, it, it's, it's, it's the wrong thing for us. But his word, that's why it's so important that if, when, we, when we read it, he'll talk to us and let us know which path we should be on. That's huge. Thank God he loves us enough to show us what the, you don't have to go to a fortune teller and look into a crystal ball. Just open up the, the book and God will show you. He'll tell you and you'll know it. Amen. How many have done things in your life where you're like, this just doesn't make sense, but I feel like I have to do this. Amen. Hallelujah. And how many have, have, have disregarded that and went with what made sense? Amen. How'd that turn out? Amen. Not good. Lesson learned. T-shirts to prove it, you know? So it's very important that we follow. His word teaches us. He shows us which path that we should be on. Uh, flip over to Hebrews chapter 12 for me. Hebrews chapter 12. And I want to read, uh, I want to read this to you. I, I was just going to read the last couple verses, but the, starting in the very first verse and going on through to verse 13, is uh, it's powerful, you know. Right. You, you, you can't lose by reading God's word. So we're going to read that whole thing. And again, we're talking about the first point is how God's word, when we when scripture through scripture and studying it, God teaches us which path we should be on. Amen. And that's the first step in, in heading in the right direction. And then things will begin to uh, you know, there will be challenges even on the right path. Okay, it's not a walk in the park, but at least it's a walk in the right direction. So, uh, Hebrews chapter 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily hinders our progress. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. You know, the, 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 the life of a Christian is not a sprint. It's a marathon. We need endurance, you know. You could sprint real quick, and that's it. But when you have to run a marathon, you need to pace yourself, you need to prepare yourself, and you need to endure. So let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this. This is how he's given us instruction. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from start to finish. It's never about us. We can never get so smart and so clever and so spiritual that we don't need to depend on Christ anymore. Amen. Amen. That's when you think you take a shortcut in this marathon and you end up on the wrong path again. And, oh. and your life starts spinning out of control. He was willing to die a shameful death on the cross because of the joy he knew would be his afterward. Now he is seated in the place of highest honor beside God's throne in heaven. Think about all he endured when sinful people did such terrible things to him, so that you don't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. And you have entirely forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you, his children. He said, my child, don't ignore it when the Lord disciplines you. And don't be discouraged when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes those he accepts as his children. Amen. We all understand that concept. Amen. We've all heard it as kids, and we say it to our own kids. We're doing this because we love you. And the kids are like, mm, bull. Just like we all, oh, it's going to hurt me then more than it's going to hurt you. Not really. Not really. But we do it because we love them. Amen. You know, we want them, we know and, and listen, God loves them even more than we do. And he knows 20, 30 years down the road for them. We can only project, you know, so far. And even at that, we want, as earthly parents, make sure that they're going in the right direction. 
And if we have to reel it in and, and a little bit and tighten things up to keep them that way, then that's what we do, simply because we love them. And God does the same thing with us. So, but we need to be, let's not be like earthly kids who don't embrace the correction. Amen. They're not real happy about it. We need to, as when God corrects us, we need to look at it as, you know what, he's, he's looking out for me. There must be something that, that he wants me to avoid and bypass, so I'm going to embrace that, you know, and not, and not get bitter towards it. So, as, verse 7, as you endure this divine, I love it, this divine discipline, that's what I'm, the terms I'm going to use, this is divine discipline. <laughs> as you endure this divine discipline, <laughs> remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who was never disciplined? We probably know something like that, right? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children after all. Since we respect our earthly fathers who disciplined us, should we not all the more cheerfully submit to the discipline of our heavenly father and live forever? For our, heavenly father, father, for our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always right and good for us because it means we will share in his holiness. Now this, no discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. Everybody says, that. amen to that. Nobody really enjoys it. It is painful. But afterward, there will be a quiet harvest. Listen to this. I love this. Afterward, there will be a quiet harvest of right living for those who were trained in this way. Amen. Yeah. Right living. Hallelujah. Right living. You know, I think about people who, who don't understand how we live and, and, and how we serve God and... and uh, and, you know, sometimes they will make fun of you and you don't know what you're missing out on. And what if you're wrong? What if, you know, all this stuff and look everything that you've missed out on. Listen, living for God is peaceful, yeah, right hallelujah. living. Yeah, hallelujah. You know, it, 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 it's the way there's no heartache with it. You know, it's, it's sore. It's yay, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death and, and valleys come. You know, if all we had was sun all the time, I said this last time I ministered, what do you get when there's just sun? A desert. A desert. You know, so there has to be some shade shadowing times in our lives, but God holds our hand. He takes us through it. Amen. You know, and, and there's a harvest of right living available to us, peace and happiness. Yes, so, and, 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 and for those who are trained in this way, now this is the verse I wanted to get to, verse 12. So, take it, because we're talking about, specifically, there's so many things, but four things that reading the scripture does for us. And we said that the first one, and I'm still on the first one, the other three aren't as, I won't be as long with them, I don't think. But um, I'm not promised that. <laughs> but um, that, that, that we're talking about what his word does. It teaches us and shows us what path to take. So take a new grip with your tired hands and stand firm on your shaky legs. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Then those who follow you, though they are weak and lame, will not stumble and fall, but will become yes, strong. Hallelujah. Amen. That's important. So God's word teaches us what path that we should be on. And you know something? When we get on the right path and we start going against the flow and against the grain, yes. people will follow you. Yes, hallelujah. People will begin to follow you. And, and it says that those who are weak and lame, those who don't know, as they begin to follow you, they won't stumble and fall, but they will become strong. So it's important. God's word teaches us. It teaches us what path we should be walking. Number two, his word also convicts us or rebukes us when we need it. So God shows us, his word, it convicts us, and he shows us when we're off the path. Amen. Now you may be saying, well, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, how many have ever been, had conviction in your heart? You know, we get convicted of things. God's word does that. If we read his word, it will convict us. And it shows us when we're off the path. Now... That's the dilemma that we're faced with. We can either, you know, like, like uh, Timothy says, look in the mirror, 
We can be just hearers. I mean, James, we can just be hearers and not doers. We can look in the mirror, forget what we look like, and go continue living the same way and, and, and have the same miserable results. Or we can allow his word that sh showed us which path to take, now allow his word to show us that we're not on that path right now. You need to get back on that path. Amen. And uh, Acts chapter 2, I want to read this to you. See, his word convicts us. It convicts us, but it does not make us do anything. God's given us our own will to choose what we want to do. But he, he, his word convicts us, and it's at that point, are we going to obey, or are we going to harden our hearts? You know? And what happens is every time you harden your heart, that voice that convicts you just gets dimmer and quieter and quieter till, till you're at a point you don't even hear it anymore. You're living completely according to the flesh, and, and, and your life is spiraling out of control. And that's a scary place to be. And God all along warns us, if we'll spend time in his word, he'll show us. But, but we've got to be sensitive to that. And we've got to say, okay, that's when 1 John 1, 9, yeah, God, I thank you for showing me. I know I've missed it. I kind of veered off the path. I repent. I'm, I'm getting back on that path again. Thank you for showing that to me. Or we can take the other route and get, get bitter and get offended and get angry and then just fall off the face of the earth. You know, and then that, that takes us, and what happens is, what happens is, and, and uh, I don't know this from experience, this is what people told me. This is what, <laughs> what happens is, we get so hardened in our hearts that we don't want to pick the Bible up anymore because every time we do, it just convicts us. And we don't want that because it doesn't feel good. We want to, we want to take this path with all the flashing lights because that's where it looks like it's happening. You know? So, but, but that's not what we need to do if we're going to uh, reach and stay in this race with endurance, right? Acts chapter 2 and verse 37, we're talking about how he rebukes us and it convicts us. And uh, it doesn't condemn us. There's a difference between conviction and, and, and condemnation. You know, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. But there is conviction. Conviction is, is, is being presented with a choice. You know, that, that I know that what I'm doing isn't right and I need to change this. Condemnation is you're no good, you'll never amount to anything. You've missed it too many times, there's no hope for you. God will never, ever, nor has he, nor will he ever feel that way about us. The Bible says that while we were still yet sinners, Christ died for us. So he died for us when we were when we had rejected him, when we didn't even know him. You know? Why? Because he saw the future. You know? He sees the future. So God loves us, and his conviction is just to help us to get on the right path and to stay on the right path. Verse 37 in Acts chapter 2, it says, uh, I'll start in verse um, 36, I guess. So let it be clearly known by everyone in Israel that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Now, Peter was, Peter was preaching. It was Peter's message, okay? So I'm not going to go back for time's sake and read the whole uh, beginning of Acts chapter 2, but do that and give you something to read, and, you'll, and God will speak to you, and, and you'll learn. But, um, but so he says... He says right here that we'll start in verse 34. For David himself never ascended into heaven, yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit in honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. 36. So let it be clearly known by everyone in Israel that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. He was talking to the Jews. Peter was talking to the Jews, and they had just recently said, release Barabbas, crucify the king of kings, okay, crucify him. A week prior to that, they were worshiping him as he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, okay? As Peter preached the word, Peter's words, it says in 37, convicted them deeply. See, his word, if we'll read it, will convict us deeply. I want to be convicted if I'm doing something wrong. You know? God, thank you that you love me enough to, to show me where I'm missing it. 
You know, we may not be doing it intentionally, but just because it's not intentional doesn't mean that there's that it, that it, that it's okay. You know, how many have ever been pulled over? Oh, I didn't know the speed limit changed to 40. Uh, you probably did, and I'm sure. However, it did. And you were doing 55. You know, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> you know, so conviction. God's word convicts us. Peter's, Peter's sermon convicted them deeply. And they said to him to the, and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must turn from your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord our God. So his word will change us. It will convict us. It will cause us just like these people. When we, when we live our Christianity, our, our, our life should just be Read. It should be an open book, epistle. Amen. People should know. Amen. Not by what we say, but just by our lifestyle. Yes, should bring conviction on people. Yes. Not condemnation. Not we're better than you. Because we're not better than anyone else. Hallelujah. We're not. We're equal. We're all God's children. Yes, hallelujah. You know, but our life, just like these, just like they were convicted of their sins and it caused them to repent. Mm -hmm. That's that's how our life should be. It should just be lifestyle kind of evangelism. So God's word teaches us. It shows us which path to take. It also convicts us and shows us when we're off the path. Number three, his word corrects us. Okay? Convicting, showing you you're off the path. Okay? Correction, showing you how to get back on the path. Okay? Turn over to Psalm chapter 119. We're going to read that psalm. Nobody got that. Amen. Did you get it? Yeah. Psalm 119. It's 150 verses. I'm not kidding. I'm only kidding. We're not going to read the whole psalm. I'm waiting for you to. Maybe when you got to it, you keep turning the pages three times. Like, Where's this thing at? Yeah, it's a long one. But we're not going to read the whole thing. But he corrects us through through studying his word. I just love what the word does. It shows us the path to take. It lets us know when we kind of slipped off the path, and then it teaches us how to get back onto the path. So Psalm 119, and verse, uh, yeah, I know there's two of them that I want to read. Verse 115, or no, 105 rather, 105. I will start in verse 102. I will start in verse 101. Okay, I have refused to walk on any path of evil, that I may remain obedient to your word. I haven't turned away from your laws, for you have taught me well. How sweet are your words to my taste, they are sweeter than honey. Your commandments give me understanding, no wonder I hate every false way of life. How to get back on the path, 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. I've promised it once and I'll promise again, I will obey your wonderful laws. If you, you, you found that you're off the path, get it back into his word. Because yes, the word is going to put you back on the path. His word is a lamp to our feet. How many have ever stumbled around in darkness? How many have ever got up and kicked that god-awful bed post with your pinky toe and you feel like you just tore your foot off? It hurts more than anything. That little, they, they, well, thank God, I don't know if they, they still make metal bed frames like that, but I got rid of them in our house. Now we kick a big chunk of wood if, you, if you're not paying attention, but it hurts. Amen. So a flashlight is essential piece of equipment if you're camping, you're in the woods, and you're on a path somewhere. You need a flashlight. And you know, it, it's, it's, it, it, it requires faith because you can only see so far with a flashlight. One step in front of the other is how we walk with God. One step in front of the other. We want, well, God, you know 20 years from now. Can you just tell me what it is so I have some kind of a goal I can? No, nope. no, nope. he's not going to tell you what it is 20 years from now. Yeah, but he knows. Because, you know, there's no faith in trusting. You already know that he wants us to walk by faith yeah. one step at a time. Amen. So his word enables us to, to get back on the path. 
um, verse 130 also says this. You know, we're talking about the importance of reading God's word every day. 130 says, um, as your words are taught, they give light. Even the simple can understand them. Um, the King James says, uh, says it differently in verse 130 of 119. It says, the entrance of your word gives, gives light. The entrance of thy word gives light. It gives light unto the simple. So we've established the fact that if you if you uh, you fell off the path, which that happens to us, it's not the end of the world. The end of the world is if you don't get back on the path. Hallelujah. That's the end of the world. Slipping off the path is not the end of the world. You know that happens. That happens, and the more discipline we get with this, the less that will happen. And that's the goal. But if we don't ever submit to the conviction of the Holy Spirit as he's showing us how to get back on the path, that's when it's detrimental. That's when it's not going to end well for you and those that you're uh, associated with. So his word gives us, uh, it's, it's light, it's a lamp to our feet, and it sheds light in our hearts so that we know what we're supposed to do. And this all is you know, predicated on trusting God, number one, because uh, I'm talking to you this morning as, you know, I haven't seen God, but I know him. I know him, you know, and, and we, we talk about him that way because he's real. He's real in my life. He speaks to me every day, you know, and I rely on him for wisdom, for direction, on, and, and every one of us. That's, that's the life that we're supposed to, to, to lead and to live because, you know, we may not, restoration is coming, man. It's been spoken. We are living in the, the, the last days. And the things that we've been waiting on and believing God for and haven't seen yet are going to manifest. The, the, these things are going to happen. They're going to happen. And it's not, it's a marathon. It's not for the weary and the faint hearted. It's for the people that are, and, and every one of us qualify to be that way. But we have to do what it takes to get there. And it's, it's, it's a matter of trusting God. Submitting to his will for your life, surrendering your agenda, laying it down, and saying, you know what, I'm not the employer, I'm the employee now. Yes. You know, let's give up ownership and let him handle our affairs. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. You know, and we all work for somebody, you know, and if you go to work, you don't have to worry about, you know, the, the stuff the, the management aspect of things, unless you are in management, but still, there's someone above you as well. You know, it's just, you go in and do your job. Amen. That's it. Go and do your job. Be a model employee. That's yeah. it. Be a model employee. You know, respect your boss. Be diligent. Be hard worker. But just be an employee. That's it. You know, and those kind of employees get promotions. Don't they? They get promoted. So God's word, it, 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 his, his word acts like a lamp to our, to our feet. And that's the life that God desires for us to live. And the last point is he trains us. His word, when we study scripture, it trains us. God shows us how you can stay on the path. So, so, so we looked at, we, we looked at, um, at a couple different things. We looked at... Uh, how his word teaches us which path to take. It also shows us when we're off the path, shows us how to get back on the right path. And now the last thing that it does for us, and this is the key to the whole thing, it teaches us how to stay on the path. And we're already in Psalm. Turn over to Psalm chapter 1. How many want to stay on the path, Amen. the right path? How many, how many right now would say, God, I, I'm giving up the path that I thought I needed to carve out for myself, and I'm jumping on your path, because I know that that's the right thing. Your plans for my life supersede my plans. You know, I say this all the time, I don't know what the future holds. I really don't. It's a, but I know who's holding the future. And as long as I know who's holding the future, I'm good. I'm good, because God cares about me. God loves me. God loves my wife. God loves my family. The things that are important to me, God cares about even more than I do. You know? And the things that we do in life to keep control are because we do care. 
about certain things. And we feel like if we can get our hands on it, we can make this work. Amen. And that's not the case. It's not the case. We're so limited in what we're able to do. God is unlimited. Amen. And the things that we care about, the good things in life that we want and desire, God wants them and cares about them more than we do. Yes, Our families, he cares about cares about all those things. The, the success of your children and, and your future and being able to enjoy the good things of life while we're here on this earth. God desires those things for us. But he has a formula for us to achieve them. And it isn't in our own wisdom, in our own merits. You know what the Bible does say? The Bible says that he who doesn't work does not eat. You know what? Be a model employee. Go to work. Do something. Do something. And that, the natural and the supernatural, you're going to see incredible, incredible results. That's what God wants from us. But he doesn't want us to be the ones managing the affairs of life. He wants to handle that. Aren't you glad that he wants to do that? I mean, you know, it's like having a financial advisor take care of all your assets. They're, they can only do so much as well. You know? And, but God, he, has a, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Everything is his. At, his, at our disposal. Yes. You know? If you have a rich father, you don't even think twice about, like, Dad, I need a new car. Dad, I need this. Dad, I need that. Yes, right? Know. And we, we boldly, we expect to get it. Yes. Why? Because my dad has a lot of money. Amen. Well, your dad has a lot of stuff. Yes. A lot of stuff. He has what you need. Amen. Just maybe not when you think you need it. Amen. But he has it. Yes. And he'll give it in his time. Just, just serve him. Please him. Be obedient. That's what he wants. So um, the last point is it teaches us how to stay on the path. Because that's where, that's where peace and that's where happiness and, and, and joy and success and stress-free stress -free living is when we're staying on the path of life. Yes, God's path. And, and here's how you do it. You know, here's how you do it. Obviously, we've been talking about the scriptures, and, and spending time in God's word. But this is how it happens. Psalm chapter 1. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with scoffers. We all know people like that. But they delight in doing everything, that, now we're talking, but, but they delight in doing everything the Lord wants. Day and night they think about his law. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, yes, bearing for, fruit each season without fail. Their leaves never wither, and all they do, they prosper. Amen. So the King James says it like this, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Yes, and in his law he meditates on it day and night. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaf will not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That is how you stay on the path. Yes. But let me tell you what happens when you get off the path. And it, and it gives you what happens to those that don't follow that. But it says, but the ungodly are not so. But this is not true of the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly. He watches over our path of the godly. But the path of the wicked leads to destruction. There's one way and one way only for us to stay on this path. And stay in, in, in hooked up and abiding in the vine. There's only one way. It isn't coming to church every Sunday and Wednesday. It isn't going to prayer meetings. You can do that all day long. You can go to prayer meetings and, and go to church and do all that every day of the week. That's not how you, those are great things. That's not how you stay on the path. You stay on the path by opening this book, Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Okay? Every day, meditate on it, day and night. Then you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that always brings forth its fruit in season. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. And, uh, and we're going to close with this so the music ministry can come back up. 
Uh, Joshua 1 8. We all know this verse of scripture as well. And, and we'll start in verse 6. It says, Be strong and courageous, for you will lead my people to possess all the land I swore to give their ancestors. Be strong and very courageous. Obey all the laws Moses gave you. Do not turn away from them, and you will succeed in everything you do. Verse 8, key. Study this book of the law continually. <laughs> Meditate on it day and night, so you may be sure to obey all that is written in it. And only then will you succeed. Amen. I think God knows what he's talking about. There is no, there's no success outside of this. There's no possible way. It doesn't matter. Do not be moved by people who don't do this and they look like they got it together. Don't be fooled by that. Because the end is not going to be good. Amen. And I, uh, we should be uh, compassionate towards those kind of people to, to get the, the truth into their heart. Because what is it if a man gains this whole world and then loses your soul in the end? What good is that? You can have everything here. You know, you're going to live forever somewhere. Amen. Either heaven or hell. This is not the last stop. And people don't believe that. And what good would it be to gain everything you can here on this earth and then at the very end spend the rest of your life in torment in hell? That's, and that's reality. That's happening to people. And that's our job as, as, as believers, as Christians. Simple message like this about allowing God's word to keep us. First, it starts with a surrendered heart. Yes. Starts with a surrendered heart, a submitting our will to God's will, laying our agenda down and saying, God, your plan for my life, that's what I want. Yes. And then the rest, we, we walk with him. We walk with him. And you know what? We will. Restoration is coming. Restoration is coming to each and every one of us who hold fast without wavering, without quitting. And there's tough times, trying times, times where we're tempted to throw in the towel. But do not, Amen. do not be moved. Do not quit. Listen, quitters never win. And winners never quit. So we know what happens if we quit, right? We know that's for certain. Well, we're not going to get it. So we just resort to that. Hold on, man. Hold on. Hold on. Because the hand of the Lord is moving in these times. And he's moving in your life. But the, the, the way to get this operating in your life is through his holy written word and a commitment to study it on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Let's just stand up on our feet. I want to pray. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you so much. God, you're so awesome to us. Let's just, just lift our hands to the Lord. Let's just worship him for a minute. Father, we honor you. Begin to thank you. Thank you. God is good to us. God is faithful to us. God provides for us. God heals our bodies. He, 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 he enables us to, to go to work and to be able to earn a paycheck. God is our source. Father, we love you. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. For your mercy. God, you never hold things against us. You're merciful to us. Father, you're gracious. You give us stuff that we don't deserve because you love us. The first we endeavor in our heart today is to serve you, Father, to surrender our life. Father, we want to stay on your path, the yes, right God. path. And Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that your word is life, it's living, it's powerful, and it's operating and working and growing in our hearts right yes. now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, I want to give a, 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 an invitation right now. To anybody who's in here, if this is the first time you've ever heard a message like this, you, know, you hear me talking about the term being a Christian and follower of Christ, now, that's salvation. And maybe you're here today, and you've never received salvation. Salvation is a gift. It's a free gift. God sent his son into the world to die for us, and that whoever would believe and accept that will have eternal life. And that's what we're talking about. This path that I'm talking about leads to eternal life. Eternal provision, eternal joy, and that comes from a relationship with God. And if you're here today and you've never ever asked 
Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior and ask him to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins, then you need to today. Today is your day. Today is your day. And you know something? We don't, we're not guaranteed it tomorrow. You know, and the, the, the sad fact, the, the hard truth is that when people leave this earth without in, in just receiving a free gift, we, we, we forfeit heaven and we spend eternity in hell. But it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. So if you're here today and you've never prayed any kind of prayer like that, you're uncertain, you don't know. I don't care if you've been coming to church for 10 years. I don't care if you've been coming to this church for 10 years. It doesn't matter. If you feel a, a stirring in your heart right now with nobody looking around, okay, that, if, if you feel that uneasiness, that's God talking to you. That's God because he loves you and he cares about you. He's already trying to get you on the right path right now. And if that's you today and you've never received Jesus, please do it today. Raise your hand and let me see. I want to pray with you. Anyone in here? Anyone? I'm going to wait one second longer. So everybody in this room is on the right path now, and you all have salvation. If that's true, raise your hand. Both hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we have our job cut out for us. You know, and that's to go and make disciples. <laughs> Father, I thank you for every person here today, Lord. We thank you that all that was said and done today, Father, j j just inspired people, Father, to, to serve you wholeheartedly, that it pointed people into a relationship with you. Yeah. I thank you, Father, that your word never returns void, but it accomplishes what it's set forth to do. Father, and I thank you that it's going to produce in the lives of all those who heard it, because we're not going to be forgetful hearers. Father, we're going to be doers of your word. And as we do, Father, we thank you for the restoration that you're bringing into our life. The manifestation of things that we've been believing you for for so long are happening in our life. Yes, we thank you for increase in every area, Father, in this church and in each member individually, Father, and in their families and in their jobs and in anything they put their hand to. I thank you, Father, for your ministering angels that watch over us and protect us, Father. I thank you for long, healthy, satisfied lives for all those that are here. Lord, I claim the 91st Psalm over each and every one of us that says that you give your angels charge over us to watch over and protect us. That we'll never dash our foot against the stone as we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And Father, we purpose to dwell in the secret place. We thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.